Joining me now is Shadow Assistant Minister for Mental Health and Suicide Prevention, Melissa McIntosh. Thanks very much for your time. Just to outline uh, briefly, if you can, what you're criticising here. Uh, thanks for having me on, Tom. We're facing a mental health crisis uh, in this country with the pandemic, multiple disasters, floods and fires, and Australians are really feeling it. Uh, mental health issues are rising, suicide rates, unfortunately, are rising. And during the pandemic, the Coalition implemented uh, a plan to increase sessions, psychology sessions for people from 10 Medicare-funded sessions to 20. And on the 1st of January this year, the Albanese government cut those sessions. So we're now back to 10. Psychologists across the country are telling me that people really need these sessions. They've been working with their patients uh, who are really, really worried about being able to afford additional sessions. And these are quite complex uh, mental health issues. And I've stood with mm. people who have lost everything uh, in a flood multiple times. So it's the cumulative impacts that Australians are feeling now. We want the government uh, to reinstate these sessions. We're calling on that. Psychologists are calling on that. Okay. And I think pretty much every Australian is calling on that. The Minister's um, explanation for this was that with 20 sessions, an evaluation was done on this, and wealthier people were more often claiming a full 20, less wealthy Australians, and often those really in need of help were able to get fewer appointments and some able to get no help at all, no appointments at all. That, that's not a good outcome overall, is it? I can tell you the letters I've received from people in my community in Western Sydney are not from wealthy people who have been accessing those sessions. I can tell you a story about a mother who said those sessions meant that her child now can leave the house and interact with her school friends. Uh, she was not able to do that before and they can't afford those extra 10 mm. sessions. The Better Access um, uh, initiative, the, the report, the analysis uh, did say that there more work needs to be done, but it said not to cut those sessions. In fact, keep those sessions for people who do have complex needs. And the question to the government is, while you're working on a plan and we're all waiting for the government's mental health plan, keep those sessions mm. in place uh, and come up with something better. Minister Butler promised the Australian people that right. well, he would have these sessions, but he would have a stakeholder okay. round table and have a solution. He has not got a solution. OK, I mean, just on that, the, the minister, I'm not sure where it's got to, but has previously spoken about um, there are or will be exemptions for people who need particular care, so it's not totally scrapping the 20, but perhaps targeting it better. Um, you mentioned individual examples there. I'm not deba debating them for a minute. There are always individuals overall in this situation who are not wealthy, who need these sessions. But the, the point about this is this was a broad evaluation. This was not anecdotal evidence. Are you saying the evaluation released by the minister, which says this wasn't actually working well to deliver care to people who needed it. Are you saying that evaluation is wrong? And if so, why? I think it's the minister's interpretation of evaluation. You're speaking to psychologists who are experts in this field. The evidence shows that those sessions were helping people. Uh, it's about creating better access, not cutting access uh, to mental health sessions. So keep those uh, extra sessions in place while you're working out a plan to be able to ensure uh, that the government is meeting the needs, the increasing mm. mental health issues uh, that we're facing in this country right now. You speak to leading well, just on those shortages, and yeah. this is a big uh, issue. A lot of psychologists are also saying the big issue is we need to increase the number of providers. That Labor hasn't been in power long. Your government was in power, what, nearly 10 years? What did you do around increasing the actual number of providers in this area? Of course we need to increase uh, the number of providers. We have workforce issues right across this country and I'd like to see uh, this happen. I'd like to see the government working with universities uh, to ensure more places when it comes to uh, psychologists getting to the end of their degrees and taking on masters and PhDs. We do need, there's no doubt about it, we do need to do more work in this area. We also need to ensure that mental health is included in the government's Medicare overall. They're wanting to improve Medicare in this country, yet they did not want, have one mental health professional on their strength 
lessening Medicare task force. They barely mm. mentioned mental health in their Medicare report. What is that telling okay. the Australian people about this government's priority of mental health? But in terms of providers, you, you can't click your fingers and get them overnight. People study for many years. There's an acute shortage right now. That has to be a big factor that the coalition was in power for most of the previous decade. Do you, do you accept some responsibility for that? I think all governments can do better when it comes to mental health. We made huge investments into mental health. You've, you've seen that through the Head to Health uh, centres that have opened across this country. And my community in Penrith and Western Sydney had the very first uh, Head to Health, helping people uh, every single day of the year if they need it, they can walk in off the street. So we did make investments. Uh, but as I said, the data is showing that mental health issues are getting worse in this country because of the pandemic, because of the multiple flood events. Uh, we're particularly seeing this in young women experiencing uh, mental, issue, mental health issues. GPs are saying, 70% of GPs are saying that the top three okay. issues they're seeing in their patients a mental health. Got to leave it there. Melissa McIntosh, appreciate your time today. Thank you.